Okay, so we're back in the UK with Jacob here from Construct 3D, and we spoke to them last year at last year's Smurf, but this year they've got some new stuff, including yep. this is being showed off for the first time. So what is this thing? So you remember from last year where we had this really big machine just standing on its own that was a prototyping test machine for all the stuff. Well, that was actually a little sneak peek of what we were working on behind the scenes, which is a more industrially rated um, product for a more industrially rated setting. So this is bigger, it is better, but it's also smaller in the same way. The actual machine fits better on a table, but the build volume is bigger. So it's, it's more efficient than the last one. It is a one. lot more efficient on the space, and at the same time, it's faster. So this one is same top speed as our Construx One XL. It is 320 millimeters per second, same accelerations, same jerk. It's the same machine in the core, but this one has double the flow rate. It's got a heated chamber up to 75 degrees, and that is uh, measured at an ambient air temperature of 21.2 degrees. And it is designed for high polymer engineering printing 24 seven, seven days a week. You can abuse this and it will just keep printing. Awesome. So, so what are you running in this machine? What kind of tool head and what hot ends and what? Okay, are you... so this is RepRap firmware. Okay. Uh, there is a probably a very contentious reason where I have versus Clipper. You know what? As somebody that who loves Clipper, but thinks it's not great on commercial machines, it's nice to see RepRap on something That's like this. That's the reason. I yeah. love Clipper myself. I use it personally, and it it hurts to say I don't think it's ready for the prime time at industrial scale. Exactly. If something goes wrong, I'm at fault, yeah. not them. And even if they know the problems, they won't know how to fix it. Plus, you also have, with Clipper being an operating system, yep. Linux system on a chip, there are potential security issues. Yes. So. so that's another side. This machine is fully data secure with now multiple connection methods. So if you want to run this machine fully standalone, at the bottom, if I move that, you have two USB ports and a HDMI. You can have a complete separate monitor, keyboard, and mouse, and that can run this machine completely air-gapped with zero functionality loss. This will just work as a standalone piece of equipment. Awesome. As for the tool head, as you asked for that earlier, we are running a slightly customized Fatus Dragon hot end with a melt zone extender on the top and the bottom. Uh, that means we can use a standard CHT Volcano nozzle as the tip, vanadium as standard, uh, a tool board, so it's simple CAN connection. It makes the wiring so much easier. Yep. It makes reliability so That's much easier. That's the Duet tool headboard. That is the Duet tool board. We might be making a custom one in the future just to make um, the connections a little bit easier. But to be honest, that's micro optimizations. It still does the same job at the end of the day. Uh, we have a flow rate sensor, so we can actually measure if there is jams in the nozzle and the extruder, as well as an eddy current sensor. So we can now bed level with a piezo probe in the nozzle and then use the eddy current sensor to do the quick 900 point bed leveling over the entire bed. And that, that also is the Duet one as well? Uh, yes, that is the Duet. We might be going with a custom shroud because ironically, we don't use the very beautiful uh, aluminium heat the, sink. Yeah, because you have you have essentially double heat yes. sinks here. So you might be going with the, what, the Revo vitamin or Roto vitamin. We might be going with the vitamins version. Um, the actual reason why we're probably going to stick with the aluminium version is for the quality control of uh, E3D is so good, they would do a better job than we could do at machining the gears on the inside of this. So sticking with the aluminium one, when you consider the cost of the machine, this becomes a drop in the bucket that for 50 quid extra, it just gives you that perfect meshed gear experience, which should be there in the first place. So it's it's a nice little reliability boost. And, and how hot do you say the chamber was getting? 75 degree chamber. Okay, so having an all metal extruder as well may be a little bit it's beneficial. Not too bad. Um, either or, we measure the temperature at the hot end. We actually have four temperature zones inside the machine. So we have one at the top, measuring the air temperature at the top. Now I should say, as you are seeing it in the castled version, yeah, you this have a little lid bit of a panel is gap. replaceable. Okay. So you can flip the lid over and it sits perfectly flush. So if you're printing a material that... Like polycarbonate, ABS, you want to keep everything internal and yep. keep that temperature up to max, you are not venting to atmosphere at all. But if you're printing a PTG or PLA or yep. something, you can just flip it over yep. and now you have this little gap. You don't top. need to do that. Um, I'm only doing it because I don't know the environment we're in, but uh, it's got internal exhaust fans. They are carbon filtered. So if you've got VOC output, it will clean them all up. Most people don't care about that, but... I think it's important. Being aware of fumes is quite an important yep. thing. Um, as for the chamber, we have four side-facing 120mm uh, blower fans. They provide a very good blade of air across the entire bed. Because if you're printing really fast at very high flow rates, you are going to be moving that head away from the molten zone very quickly. 
meaning your cooling fans on the hot end aren't doing their job. So you need external fans for that. As for flow rates, we've measured on this setup, uh, ABS is at 60 cubic millimeters per second, and these are real world speeds. These aren't like high speed filaments. These are real ABS, like just off the shelf. Uh, PLA was 32 cubic millimeters per second, uh, PETG was 45, and polycarbon was 52. Now, last year, you had a little bit of a project you were working on with a multi-in yes. single out. Is that still ongoing? Is that yes. still a thing? So what's new with that? A, we've got a finalized name, which is MISO, okay. multiple input, single output. It's also very funny because it's an actual engineering joke and it's a food. So I really <laughs> like that. And food is how you get to me. But I'll take you to that now. Okay. So this was what we looked at last year, I believe. Yes. Or a version of this last yeah. year. Yeah. So this is the generation one. This is a multi-thousand pound waste of time. <laughs> uh, we got, uh, I think, 16 cubic millimeters per second of flow. So this is all SLS. That. So there's a lot of internal geometry yep. stuff you're working So you've through. got internal channels that then merge into one output. We tried a version where it was like a CHT style where that input then splits again. The surface roughness, as you can probably see by how rough it is, yeah, it's was SLS. the same on the inside. It was dreadful. And that just stopped any flow rate benefit of having so much surface area. We've now gone to generation two. So this is a lot, looking a lot more refined here. So it's still SLS, still four yep. in, one out. We've replaced the heat sinks with an off the shelf heat sink. So it's a lot higher tolerance and it's easier to like work on. It also makes it a lot cheaper because you're not needing to like buy a, a custom made block just having it integrated is a so much of a better situation. Uh, the channels have been optimized. So they're now 20 millimeters longer. So each channel is 60 millimeters long instead of 45 millimeters long. We still have four of them, though we can go up to six. And in theory, now this one hasn't physically been tested because we lost the last one before testing. Hey, <laughs> oh, thank no. you, Royal Mail. Oh, shipping. Oh, yeah, no. They lost it between going from the acid etcher and us. Again, thank you. But no, so this one we got quickly rebuilt within four days of this show, just to show off something. <laughs> okay. Um, and this one is aimed at getting to 215-ish cubic millimeters per second. That's a lot of flow. Yes. That is a lot of flow. Now, it, it's still, it's a lot more compact than the previous iteration, but this is still gonna be a pretty chonky tool head. And I'm, I'm looking at a pretty, or the, the base of a pretty chonky motion system here. What is this? So, you correctly guessed these are linked. A, if people didn't realize it, we weren't going to mention it, but you have, which is good. <laughs> Most printers advertise speeds they're never going to reach. And that's because 600 millimeters per second is unachievable with current flow rates. The machines are more than capable of faster, but if you can't melt the material, it's not a real speed. Yeah, mo most modern printers can easily outrun their hot ends. Yeah. The motors are designed well above that of what we use at the moment. So let's take that to the antithesis, the, the biggest point we can get to. How fast can we get motors to go? About 1.4 meters per second reliably. And then let's pair it with a hot end, in this case, MISO, that is designed for those flow rates. So this can push that flow rate at those speeds with the accelerations required at a scale that makes physical sense. We're thinking a standard of a 0.8 nozzle, but we might actually go up to a one mil, depending on how much flow is available, because we want to be able to hit those max speeds at every speed and then have that as the default. It's the same as what we did with all our other printers. The max speed is what you get all the time. So, so you're getting to the state now with developing this hot end that now you, you need something, you're gonna need to put it in. Yeah. And that will actually utilize yep. that flow rate. There's also a side benefit of this is we've had a lot of customers that buy the good old Construct One or the Construct One XL, and then they want to either go bigger to a more industrial aspect, which then goes to the new black machine. But yeah, a lot I was gonna say, I, I do miss the bamboo panels. This, this has a nice bamboo you panels. You would be that... surprised at how much I miss them as well. <laughs> Engineers apparently only want black. I know, it's sad. I am actually tempted to do like custom wrap jobs so we can have like a nice wrap on any, like you can choose the color or maybe a logo or something. Just something to make it look a bit nicer because just black. Yeah. It's, it's a bit big black box again. And I don't like big black boxes. Engineers love it. That and the price tag, they didn't want it too cheap. So we put extra features in that make it worth the money again. We will never make something that isn't worth the money, but it is more expensive because a lot of people came back to us saying, if it's less than this price, they won't consider it, no matter how good the printer is. Your business. That's business. Yeah. It sucks. If you want a good deal, buy an XL. It's honestly fantastic. But if you don't like a good deal, but you want a really good printer, 
this machine. So, so this is something that's in the works prototype. This is in the works. Obviously. This is also because a lot of the people that don't want big black machine, they might want a custom machine. There's a lot that want 10 mil smaller or 10 mil bigger or a meter bigger or a meter smaller. This is what this is for. So the main difference is laser cut steel. Yeah, this at is the, steel. This at is... the moment it's steel, it'll probably go to aluminium just so we don't have um, bimetallic issues. But the idea was use the laser cutter to make a square frame. That square frame can then be bolted in however you want. Motors can be attached and then you have a universal platform that you can rapidly scale and it doesn't affect the manufacturing pipeline because that's why most companies don't offer custom. It's why we don't currently offer custom. It takes too long to make that for you. Now we're making a design that has got that in the pipeline already. Scaling up or scaling it down will just work. So essentially you'll have your, your consistent components like yeah. belts and pulleys and motors yeah. and whatnot. And then if the customer wants one that's twice the size, you just basically laser cut a, a yep. bigger frame and then put it, it together It might the same mean way. there might be a, a belt change to a thicker belt. But other than that, it's pretty much, the technology was already over spec. So it's a template Changer. essentially. Yeah, it's a template. So. It helps with that industrial design. Plus it'll be really fast. That is really cool. Awesome, so that is again Construct 3D and Thank you, Jacob. Cheers. Thank you. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I want to give a huge shout out to Hugh Forge along with LDO Motors for sponsoring this year's Sanjay Mortimer Rep Rap Fest coverage. For printer parts, kits, accessories, and more, check out LDO Motors and print some cool stuff with Hugh Forge. Cheers.